You're wasteful. Stop it. New phone every year. <coughs> Batteries in the trash. Disgraceful. You waster. Oh, an e-cig. Don't mind if I feed my e-waste e-diction. Well, well now, what, what do, do we, we have him? here? Caught in the act and no gold to pay your fine. I'll be confiscating your e-waste. Now it's off to jail with you. Wow, it's Intel's 14th 14 nanometer process. If you buy shiny, you wasted. This video is uploaded on National E-Waste Day to help spread awareness about what you can do to minimize your e-wasteful habits. We all have more electronic devices than you would initially expect, each containing precious metals like gold and copper, but you can't simply extract the stuff you want from the stuff you don't. Those who work with e-waste have to be careful. Toxic carcinogens like lead and mercury are all throughout your favorite shinies. And wow, that's a long list of health concerns with this stuff. It's mostly our fault, but it's also coxsumerism. According to this article, an estimated 5 billion smartphones were disposed of in 2022, which isn't just an environmental issue, but a security one. Because you didn't wipe your data before you took a dump, so whoever found your old device has more info on you than anyone should have. Let me be clear, the bleeding edge and latest technologies have their advantages, such as being faster, new features, having better power efficiency, longer battery lives, and lower power consumption than the last gen counterpart. But oh boy, look at that price tag. Better idea, save your money, find an old one on eBay, and be happier because you're a good little saver. I'd like to touch on what you, as the consumer, can do to minimize e-waste. Opting for used or refurbished products can significantly cut down the e-waste you generate. It might require more effort than a quick trip to the nearest tech store for a new device, but with a bit of knowledge, you'll find it's worth it. Searching through online marketplaces like Facebook, OfferUp, or even Craigslist can be a hassle, especially when sellers misjudge the value of their items. A 2014 MacBook, for example, isn't worth seven to $1,500. These platforms aren't always reliable for finding a working product or even one that matches the seller's description. Also, there's no safety net if you end up with a lemon. However, stores like Best Buy or Micro Center offer solid refurbished device programs, often with discounts because they're pre-owned. Don't be misled by the used label. Refurbished means the device has been repaired and restored to ensure it meets specific standards. Replaced parts in refurbished devices are often new and should last just as long as in a new device, provided the repairs were done correctly, of course. If you're wary of buying a lemon, platforms like eBay offer buyer protection, ensuring that you get what you paid for or your money back. Still, it's crucial to do your homework, read listings carefully, and evaluate if a device's price matches its performance. There's no point in purchasing something that was subpar even when it was brand new. I won't dictate your choices, but I'll highlight some key factors to consider and research before committing to a device and its ecosystem. Compatibility and upgrade potential. Check software compatibility and whether the device can be upgraded to extend its lifespan, as a lot of products like Macs only have a seven year life cycle, so once that seven years is up, you generally will lose support for that device. That can be a problem. Hey, M1 Mac users, your time is almost up. You're at five years. Remember the benefits of reducing e-waste and supporting sustainability by being a smarter consumer. It's important to be aware of making environmentally responsible choices that not only reduce e-waste, but almost as importantly, are just worth it to buy. There isn't much to gain from an old 2010 desktop if its power consumption is way too high relative to the performance it puts out. That would just make little to no sense at all. Just please keep in mind to make informed and sustainable purchases because at the end of the day, it isn't just your environment that's on the line, it's also your dollar. And it's important to spend wisely so you have more dollars because these days dollars are getting harder to come by. You don't need a new device if the one you have still works fine. Yeah, the newest one's a little faster and has a, a new feature, but you were fine before that product existed, so what's changed? Sometimes what changes is the software support. Sometimes older devices get the latest software support for free, which and that's great. But there comes a time when the company stops supporting your old device, and that's where it gets a bit tricky. Sure, you can be fine without the latest features, but software updates also help with security, and skimping on that isn't worth it. But many devices these days can get seven years of software support. Not always. You'll have to check on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm still on an iPhone 8 from 2017. Seven years later, it's not on the latest iOS, and when I do upgrade, I'll buy a last-gen phone outright to save some money. And since a last-gen phone isn't being manufactured anymore, it won't add to the number of phones the company produces next-gen. I'll probably go with an iPhone SE third-gen. Software and security updates definitely apply to your computers as well. Having an up-to-date graphics card ensures compatibility with the latest games, and older unsupported GPUs won't be optimized for the latest games, and will lack some quality-of-life features. 
from AMD, there was software support going back to 2016 with the RX 480, and from NVIDIA support going back further to 2014 with the GTX 970, which is awesome if you're still gaming on these cards, but when you do upgrade or when they fall out of support, they're not garbage. Consider these for a secondary or retro system. If not, sell them, and if your hardware is broken, find a place to properly dispose of them. Just to add something else here, when it comes to not just batteries, but your more general e-waste, such as old phones, dead GPUs and the like, there are ways to properly recycle your e-waste. Retailers like Best Buy will generally have somewhere you can dispose of smaller devices like smartphones. Stores like Target sometimes run recycling events where you can ditch your old PC or microwave in exchange for some sweet, sweet tax deductions. Or you can even contact services like Call to Recycle, Earth 911, and Greener Gadgets, as they are even more reliable ways to recycle your old machines. If you are going to be recycling a full machine, I recommend pulling that old hard drive, or of course, pulling a Gilfoil. Luckily, we've evolved from the days of chewing through double A's on our Game Boys. And yes, devices still need double and triple A batteries like mice, keyboards, microphones, Game Boys. Good news, buy some rechargeables. Yeah, they cost more genius, but you'll be saving money in the long run. But we still end up with drained, dead, or failing batteries, and you can't just dump them in the trash. Oh well, why not? Because they're toxic and can cause fires. It's actually very common. Batteries also contain nasty stuff like mercury, which is super toxic. And you definitely want that in the air you wastefully breathe and in the soil that grows your junk food. There's different kinds of batteries other than single use and rechargeable. Rechargeable isn't always the best option. They don't hold a charge for as long. Places like Home Depot, Staples and Lowe's may have locations to drop off your particular types of batteries. One thing companies can do is give the consumer ways to prolong the lifespan of our devices. Companies like Valve and Framework are great at supporting the long-term lifespan of their products with ways to buy individual parts for the Steam Deck and Framework laptops, as well as a path to upgrade your Framework laptop with an entirely new motherboard instead of needing to purchase a whole new device. Resources like iFixit are a great way to find out how to repair your devices or how to take them apart for upgrades. Prolonging the lifespan of your device is important because it's probably still good. You might not need a new computer if you can upgrade or fix your old one to keep it more usable for a few years to come. Right to repair is very important, but some companies like Apple or John Deere fight to make sure you, yes you, Vera, can't fix your own device because they don't trust you or something. Apple makes you go through their own self-service repair service, which is better than nothing, but notoriously John Deere has faced heavy backlash when trying to keep the consumer from repairing their own equipment and keeping their diagnostic tools away from the consumer. These are tactics for those companies to make more and more precious doubloons and to keep you on your knees for them. They can make the argument of safety and quality of genuine parts, but it doesn't have to be this way. And companies will continue to take advantage of you so long as you let them. So vote with your dollar and support the devices and companies that give you the tools to keep your devices operational. Like Apple, weirdly enough. Older technology is less efficient, and a big part of this video is telling you to keep your old stuff, but they'll draw more power and be slower than something newer. And if you're on ancient technology, I won't blame you for upgrading, but I'll always recommend getting something last gen or so secondhand. It'll save you money, but do get informed about where your power comes from. Some places still use coal, gross, but if your power comes from a renewable resource like wind, solar, or hydro, then this applies a little bit less too. On your computer, you can undervolt your graphics card or processor, and if you're overclocked, do you really need to be? It'll show on your power bill too. If you become more conscious of this and turn off lights you're not using and unplug appliances you're not applying at the moment, you'll waste less power. Well, how do I undervolt, do you ask curiously? Luckily, I just made a video about this. You can check that out there. You know that green triangle? That means something. Reducing your consumption, you don't need the new thing. What you have is still probably completely usable. Get a reusable bottle instead of buying plastic water bottles. Like, come on, man. Really? Plastic bottles you throw away? It's not e-waste, but it's still wasteful and you get a water purifier in a reusable water bottle. The second R is reuse. You don't need to get a new one if the one you have still does what you need it to do. And if not, fix it yourself it'll probably be cheaper and make you feel better about yourself if you can fix something rather than shelling out more than you need to. And finally, recycle. It's the last R for a reason. The answer isn't to recycle. It's to reduce and reuse so you don't have to recycle. 
but everyone's always chirping about recycling. So what's the problem? Recycling takes a bunch of energy. You're wasting your energy to break down manufactured goods and then use more energy to turn it back into something that will go right back into needing to be broken down again later. That is wasteful. And plastics can only be broken down so many times. That little indicator on your plastic doodads, that's more than just for aesthetics. It tells you the kind of plastic it's made of, which is important when sorting out your recyclables because it'll save the recycler's time, but also because plastic can't be recycled indefinitely. Heating up the recyclable plastic shortens the polymer chain's degrading its quality. Except, spoiler warning, your plastic, even the plastic that you put into a recycling bin, isn't being recycled. We are told that our plastic is recyclable, but it's often not. I will, and by the way, for everything mentioned in this video, I'll be posting sources in the description below. And if you think it's only that bad when it comes to recycling plastics, then you don't know the half of it. Now, many of you, hearing that plastic doesn't really get recycled could actually be news to you. As a matter of fact, you may feel misled as plastic tends to come to mind when you think about recyclables. You see, that's kind of by design. This NPR article will basically tell you that plastic isn't very recyclable at all, and that industry officials, let's call them big plastic, want you and politicians to believe you can or will one day be able to recycle plastic so that they can keep using plastic because it's a lot cheaper than making and reclaiming glass bottles. The truth of the matter is that big plastic has known that you can't reliably recycle plastics since the 1970s. But thanks to big companies like, well, I'm not gonna name drop here, but I'm sure you can figure that one out with a DuckDuckGo search that says, who are the largest producers of plastic? Now this has moved beyond e-waste into the realm of general waste, but it's all connected. Many of your electronics contain plastic, but it's even worse. Because like I stated in the beginning, electronics contain lots of toxic materials that should not get thrown away and end up in a landfill. This stuff really bothers me when people don't see waste as a real issue or they don't care about pollution or climate change is a hoax. But that is incredibly irresponsible and selfish. People in my own family don't care about this stuff because they don't understand. Don't trash your home because it's not your home. There are 8 billion other humans that have to share this place with you, whether they want to or not. And I get it. That number is too big to comprehend. But us humans only make up 0.01% of all the biomass on Earth. Here's some more. 26 billion chickens selectively bred to get as fat as fast as possible so you can survive without things. Three and a half trillion fish that eat your litter and microplastics that you will end up eating yourself. 10 quintillion insects. Maybe that will give you some kind of perspective on why you have to take care of this place. For everything else currently living and for future generations. Unless you don't care anyway because the rapture is coming, so what does it matter? I know this got a bit cynical, but if I haven't managed to teach you anything or sway your opinions in any way, then by all means, go drink some more Kool-Aid. You're still breathing.